It's tricky to pin down a term like most overrated, especially for something like animals. However, you'd be hard pressed to find something lauded more than the peacock mantis shrimp. Now, it's obvious to anyone that mantis shrimps deserve mm, most of their fame, but myths will never be more interesting than reality, so let's break it down. Mantis shrimp is a large order of crustaceans called mouthfoot because they use their forelimbs to feed in addition to their mouth parts. They're most well known for the other forelimbs, the ones that can snap forward at speeds that boil the surrounding water, annihilating its prey pretty intense. However, there are a couple of reasons to calm the praise down a bit. Because you don't need that much speed to boil water, they only move at 50 miles per hour, quite shy of the promised sonic boom especially in water. If you move too fast, water can't get behind you quick enough, so it boils and then collapses in on itself and explodes. Physics is weird, especially when water is involved. Now, perhaps a punch combined with an explosion is much cooler than you thought, but for another thing, the club is by no means the most common use for the speed. Most mantis shrimps are stabby. From here on out, we have to refer to two different kinds of mantis shrimp because the choice between a punchy arm and a stabby arm defines the rest of their lifestyle. This is because the weapons are two very different attacks with very different targets. If you know much about medieval warfare, you should know that punchy beats hard armor and stabby beats soft armor. In animal terms, that would be an exoskeleton and an endoskeleton, and we can immediately see this in the prey each type hunts. Punchy mantis shrimps, like our good friend the peacock, prey on snails, bivalves, brachiopods, and other crustaceans. Of course, they are still a shrimp, so they're also inclined to detrivory, but their area is walking up to a thing with a shell, breaking the shell, and eating the creature. Now, I think this is interesting enough on its own. It's a unique lifestyle, preying mostly on armored creatures. Some birds break shells by by dropping them and starfish pry bivalves apart, but no one smashes them with a hand, and I think that's pretty cool. Stabby mantis shrimps like this zebra prey on other shrimp and fish. Now, these are incredibly powerful, and one of them is creepy to look at, but they're not perfect. For one thing, the mantis shrimps are still not big. A large fish wouldn't bat an eye at chomping on a mantis shrimp, of course. It still can be used as an effective defensive tool, even against a larger predator, but even that has its limitations, because for another thing, it's painstakingly front-facing. To defend itself using its claws, a mantis shrimp needs to reach a defensive position, preferably protecting its vulnerable pleon, and it needs to take the time time to arm itself. The mantis shrimp punch doesn't come out with zero frame data. It has to be charged since it operates by putting the muscular energy to pull the muscles back and then releasing them as a punch. Obviously, it can't walk around with its muscles in tension all the time, and its use against prey is equally limited because mantis shrimps aren't very fast. There's a reason the stabby kind are ambush predators and the punchy kind only eats things that can't walk. But wait! According to Source, which is presumably reliable, they can move at 30 body lengths a second. Ah yes, this is true, however they are shrimp. Shrimp and lobsters have a form of motion where they flick their tail forward, forcing water forward, forcing them backwards. It's very effective as the numbers show, but it launches the shrimp backwards. This leads to a few problems. Number one, it's not a tail, it's a pleon. A tail is something that extends out away from the body. A pleon is just part of the body. It has the digestive tract inside it. It's comparable to the abdomen of an insect or spider. Same goes for the metastoma of a scorpion. Now, this may seem hypocritical coming from the guy who made a whole video about scientific versus common definitions, but this is not a common video. This is a very serious biology video where I insult a shrimp. Number two, it can't use the speed to hunt anything down because it has front-facing weaponry but backwards movement, which is incidentally the opposite problem that bumblebees have. Number three, if it gets ambushed, it can't do anything. All you have to do is grapple the pleon, and it can't move, it can't twist around to punch you, and it can't drop it like a lizard because, as previously stated, a lot of its vital organs are inside it. Now, fortunately, only one kind of sea creature can really grapple, but unfortunately, cephalopods are kind of a direct counter to mantis shrimp. They have giant tentacles that can hold things at a safe distance, they have a body with no hard skeleton and can shrug off even the most well-placed punch, and of course, they can camouflage themselves and ambush any prey. But hey, maybe their amazing eyesight will let them see through their clever disguises. <sighs> Let's talk about the vision after this commercial break. Today's video is sponsored by Blinkist. Do you like reading books but hate reading books? Wait, who is this? There are a ton of articles out there praising the mantis shrimp's eyesight, and tons more claiming this is a myth. Who to believe? Well, believe me, because I read like seven of them. So, the conventional narrative is that humans only have the color receptors to see three distinct colors, while mantis shrimps has a full array of 14 photoreceptors. Therefore, it must see better. Well, first things first, those aren't some magical, imperceptible colors. This is what they look like, and the humans isn't quite accurate either. Now, I'll give you a minute to guess what the debunk is. I can see more than three colors. These frequencies are the ones used by the eyes, but by combining the measurements, the brain creates a whole spectrum of colors. So, can mantis shrimps do that more efficiently? You can probably see where this is going. Nope, they can't do that at all. 
Those 14 colors are the only colors that a mantis shrimp will ever see. And to add insult to injury, this butterfly, Sarpedon's pencil, can see 15. But now it's time for me to defend the mantis shrimp, because mantis shrimp vision is still amazing. For one thing, it's not like they could never combine colors and so they're trying to compensate. They evolved eyes that were so powerful they didn't need to combine colors. And that allowed them to save brain space that they can use to, I don't know, effectively control and aim a hand cannon. For another thing, this vision still extends outside the range of human vision. They can see ultraviolet light. Granted, that's not exactly unique to them. Basically, every animal has that on humans, but still. And if you've looked into this, you might have seen that they can see polarized light, which is a bit of a misnomer. Anyone can see polarized light. They can see the polarization of light. Essentially, they can see which direction light is flowing, and the foremost application is going to be that they can tell whether they're looking at regular light or reflected light. That lets you see through some forms of camouflage, especially countershading. It's weaker in the ocean because water refracts light weirdly, but it works at close range, and their polarized light vision is better than most. They can see circularly polarized light. And one last thing before we finish. If a mantis shrimp were human-sized, it could punch a basketball into orbit. This statement just sucks in general. I'm gonna skip over the obvious things. Most importantly, a mantis shrimp isn't trying to transfer momentum with its punch. It's trying to break stuff. If a mantis shrimp were human-sized, it could pop a basketball. This is a significant difference because things break based on pressure, not force. And the scaled-up mantis shrimp isn't just heavier, it's also larger. So let me make my own model. We start with 1300 PSI, given an average height of 3 inches, scaled up to my 5 foot 11 inches, that's uh, just uses factor of 24. We'll assume the force it can produce is proportional to mass, so that cubed, and area is of course squared. So our human sized mantis shrimp can punch at a PSI of 31,200. For whatever reason, I've done my calculations in customary, so we convert it to the metric 215 megapascals before we move to the stomping ground. The instantaneous force is enough to obliterate concrete. It's not even close. It smashes any wood, even punching into the grain. It can shatter granite. It can break even the strongest bones and the weaker titaniums and steels. It can't break through diamond. Even now, diamonds are forever. But you know what else is? The claw itself. A mantis shrimp can't break its own claw on anything, nor can a human-sized mantis shrimp. It would have to be a 120-foot-tall colossus, punching a wall of diamond to break its own claw. And I think that's pretty cool. Also, Mike Tyson could definitely beat up a chimp. He's twice its freaking size. 